to understand what a mystery is, if you have to agree with the terms of a mystery, it's something that you cannot understand. If you agree to that, then you're welcome to the mystery. And I think there is a before and then there is an after. There is before the mystery, before you engage in the mystery, and then there is the after when you actually are engaging in the mystery. You are trying to understand. Already here, there's a doorway. Let's call the doorway a uh, gate, or let's call the doorway a church. My name is Alexander Torbo. I'm an artist, visual artist. I paint a lot <laughs> and I do sculptures and sometimes I perform. As an artist, I always been drawn to the religious if you take all languages of religion and extract it into like the simplest language, it's a ring, it's a sun, it's the moon, it's all these sacred geometries that exist to communicate the earliest idea of the grand mystery, the creation, all our questions. I need solitude because I'm sensitive and I'm very emotional. And I need balance. And for me, I get that by creating these paintings. I get my own balance and harmony. I need beauty. In this world, there's a lot of beauty, obviously, but uh, there is a way of creating my own place for contemplation and beauty. As a child, a young child, I was very little, I was small. Uh, I think I still am, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I didn't grow for two years, uh, which I'm only saying because it, it made me very introvert. It was very clear that the realm I wanted to, to, uh, to go to or like where I found my peace was storytelling. I love stories, love them. I saw my own inner landscape as like fairy tale mountains with fire and dragons that I needed to understand. The fantasy genre made everything around me more fluid and more magic, which I suppose I needed as a being very emotional and sensitive. I was looking up in the sky. I was like, Father, if God and the heavens is the skies, where, where is the heavens now? Because it's a sunny day. And my father said, Maybe you should look a little bit further than the skies. And in my head, I was like, for spaceships? Further ahead for like aliens? Further ahead for like other civilizations that we have yet not encountered? Wow, that was 
whoa, I've never thought about it. I, I think my imagery today still rely on that exact thing. So then I started to draw, draw the imagery of these books that I was reading or were being told. I guess I could see that there was a potential of having and creating other worlds or other realities. I found a lot of inspiration uh, for just understanding the world we live in through fantasy. And then coming from fantasy, magic cards, it's like the first step for me to engage with mythologies because magic card has so much of their characters built strongly or vaguely um, on actual mythological uh, beings, like people you know from mythologies. Uh, there are angels, there are demons, there are um, uh, monks, priests, high priests, like uh, my, my favorite cat is called Nightmare. I love the nightmare. I always have had nightmares. Finally, I saw a creature that was a nightmare. I saw this is how a nightmare actually looks. It was like the manifestation of a nightmare. It's a horse. It's a horse that rides in the sky. A horse that rides in the sky at night with its, like everything is burning from this horse. And already by then, in my youth, I had a difficult relationship to fire because I was at a party at the school, a dance, school dance party, where I, did, I set myself on fire by accident. Alexander, you caught on fire, someone said to me. And I didn't believe it. It was, you know, a foolish age. And then I realized, because I felt it, uh, that I was on fire. It was a complete circular, round shape. Like, I would have thought it had burned like asymmetrically. Like, I wouldn't think that it would be so geometrically perfect. Uh, and this relationship to fire being slightly burned, looking at myself being on fire, uh, was traumatic. I've dreamt about this so many times, and it was a nightmare. Finally, there was a cat saying nightmare, and it was a horse riding in the sky at night on fire. And I started to think about, as I still do to this very day, what is fire? What is fire? Why am I so affected? This image opens up my curiosity to fire, not being afraid of the nightmare, but embracing it. It was that kind of revelation that I had playing my magic cards, that these images are doorways for me to understand a grander mystery I was 16 years old and my father died. And I remember going to his deathbed. I asked my father, Father, what should I do with my life? He said, you should go to school, do an education, a proper one. And that is such a fatherly thing to say on the deathbed. He would never have said that. 
had he not been ill. That cracked me up. But as it was his wish, I did it. I went to high school. But what happened when he died? There was an extreme loss. There was a hole. That was where the burning hole of my t-shirt became a burning hole in my body. And this burning hole has haunted me and still does to this very day, every day and today. I wanted to fill out this hole of my father. So automatically, since he was an artist and I loved to draw, that hole became my father. So I just made a drawing, put it in the hole, disappeared. Bottomless hole, made more drawings, put it in a hole, gone. A magic black hole absorbed everything I did. I tried to put so many stacks of paper, of drawings into that hole, but it could never, never approve of his present. So I continued, and from that day, when I started high school, which was an awful day, I decided I wanted to be an artist instead. So I used all my time perfecting my imagery and I was more obsessed with making a drawing that I was in reading a book. Yeah, that's how I started. I wanted to fill in a hole, a hole that I've never fully covered. I've not been able to l put my father to rest in that hole. This hole cannot ever be covered by this idea of layering it with artworks or painting or sculptures, nothing. It's, it's a mystery. It's, I don't know what it is. I accept it now. My father, what do I have left of him? A drawing of a dinosaur. He lives through that. He is that. It makes me think about how we engage with memory also in a very mythological way. To be closer with this magic. I always been fascinated about that. What's left behind? Me as an artist, uh, there's so much left behind that I just, I'm happy about my work, but I'm not necessarily, it's not telling about who I am. As an artist, yes, what I deal with, yes, what I'm concerned about, yes, but not the bigger picture. We don't understand the bigger picture, but we try to, that's the thing just as in the church. I think, I think every church and religious institution, temples, mosques, are important spaces because they are made for us to believe that they are a very direct way to be in contact with something. A church is a construction. You don't necessarily go to a church or a mosque or a synagogue to meet the divine creator, but to be closer. So I'm very, and I always have been very interested in what decisions are made 
throughout history to define this architecture of the mystery. It's it's very well thought of. There's a divine symmetry. There's a divine architecture. There's an altarpiece. There's church benches. They're hard to sit on, so you focus. You know, the church is built with these kind of moments to make us feel something, to uh, dramatize this uh, notion, this choreography, divine choreography of the church. It's so well thought of. Everything is so constructed by humans, like me, like an artist. And there's a simplicity to that, that is very easy to understand, that when you walk into a church, you understand not God, but you understand more humans' relationship to God because it's right there in front of us. You walk in through the door. It's a huge door. Automatically, when you walk through something that is huge, you feel humble. There's an echo when you speak. When you speak, the idea of a before and after, you walk into the mystery. It's the premises, both of being a person of faith, believer, but it's also, it's also to me, exact similar to the idea of art. You have to accept it. There's a before you see the art, and there's an after you see the art. That's the mystery. Art has that mystery, and it's exact the same as with faith. Art contains the mystery. Contains the doubt. It contains believing, it contains sharing, being part of something. You can just replace faith with love. And there you have my praxis. This is how it works, like that. You engage in the mystery. Just like this. It's one big hallelujah. If I should give a mystery, the idea of mystery to the people or the person who sees my work, I could just ask a question, because that's the whole idea of faith. Do you believe? What I do is not like a genius thing. I'm not inventing anything. But I am using all the tools that were given through art history to talk about the imagery, the power of the imagery, the power of the myth. What is it that we actually believe in? What colors? How are the compositions? But most of all, what is the content? What is the moral? Let's talk about that. I want to talk about that. I really, really want to express my concern about what we believe in. Let's talk about the more holistic, the wholeness of these stories, because they are all around us.
Let's be critical about it. Let's talk about it. Let's do something about it. I I can't. I'm timid. I'm shy. I you know I can't cast the 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 stone. I I you know I don't I I don't have these abilities. I have this. I have this. So this is what I do. I I this is my contribution to talk about these things, question them, 